practical applications of fractal toroidal moment. Okay. Esteemed colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Iwamura, <laughs> Professor Iwamura, and uh, the organizing committee of ICCF 25, and in particular, Conrad Chersky. Uh, thank you for giving me some moments to talk about uh, the project's work of the MFMP and my own thoughts on what has come out of that. And I expect Chon Conrad Chersky, as a real scientist, will not live to regret this. <laughs> so, uh, my, name is, <clears throat> my name is Bob Grenier, and I am giving a, a talk on the practical applications of the fractal toroidal moment. And if you would like to take a quick screen grab of the monkey code here, uh, then uh, you can follow any questions you may have, answer, ask them on remoteview.icu, not now, not necessarily afterwards. You, you need to contemplate this. And then um, I will answer them in that reference, which will be a PDF which will change over time. It will have everything you need to know. So uh, in January 2015, I sat across the table from the discoverer of the nickel hydrogen system, Francesco Pien uh, Pientelli, in his home in Siena, with my uh, co-colleague uh, and director, uh, Ryan Hunt. And he told me, do not tell nature what it is. Let it show you. And up to that point, I was like, you know, maybe trying to tell nature what it was or, you know, bend to my will, like I'm making house or something, but no. Um, you, you, I kind of changed my approach to this whole science and I, because nature cannot lie. It does not have an agenda. It doesn't have an investor to please. It doesn't have IP to defend and it doesn't have, you know, a reputation. You know, it just does what it does given certain inputs. It doesn't have an opinion. And so what you have here is uh, an electrode in a Henkuren experiment. There's about a, a few to, to 700 volts of discharge going on here. There's a little amount of hydrogen in a low pressure uh, um, uh, air um, environment. So you've got a strong electric field and magnetic field going on there. And this is a coherent matter wave beam coming out of a toroidal cluster. You will see that this is true. It will be self-evident. And you can see it is not affected by the electromagnetic field. It does not have a kinetic trajectory. It does not diverge or does disperse. The quote there from Martin Fleischmann's uh, 1996 interview with Infinite Energy uh, with Christopher P. Tinsley, uh, what I want you to focus on is we had about four projects which we were working towards. One was actually to do with the behavior of electrons in metals. So in 1948, the Atomic Energy Authority of the US charged Winston Bostick to lead a team across three national labs to uh, investigate uh, essentially Tesla's work, but never gave him credit, it would seem, um, to uh, launch from deuterated titanium electrodes uh, using 10,000 amp disruptive discharges, uh, what he eventually called plasmoids. And at the very least, he had two coming from either side of the chamber, going over a magnetic field. And these came together and span around each other. And in 1956 to 57, he claimed that this, uh, he proposed that this would explain all structures of matter from subatomic to the formation of galaxies. And at the time, it was the fastest thing that had ever been created for the movement of matter. 450,000 miles an hour, these things moved at. Now, in the conclusion of uh, Ken Shoulder's book, he was brought in by one Howard Puthoff to investigate the work of John Hutchison, who produced this sample in 2007. Uh, he says, by some irony of fate, we have folded back upon ourselves and now have accidentally discovered that the electron, electron vanadium, or electron vortex, as it was called then, as an ideal monopole oscillator. This oscillator is the perfect generator for vector and scalar potential waves without contamination from either E or B, and that's electric and magnetic fields. The Weiss waves can be thought of as longitudinal waves in the vacuum. They are largely undetectable by standard electro and magnetic detection means, but are readily accessible in the monopole world. There appears to be an incredibly large number of useful phenomena yet to arise from the using these potential effects that are not immediately accessible to the force of E and B fields. 
So uh, this is from a paper uh, from Nature Materials, and this is essentially what you have. You have a, a, a poloidal uh, current, you have this toroidal uh, magnetic sort of current, whatever. Uh, it, sorry, this is the magnetic moment, rather, uh, the electric current going like this, and this is an electric field. And when you get the phase relationship right, you get cancellation of the electromagnetic waves, and it has a thing called a mean square radius. It's published in major journals, peer-reviewed journals, and there is zero electromagnetic field out here. Zero. Inside here, this can be thousands of Teslas, and you can build it, and you can build it, and you can build it. Remember that when I show you the reaction products. Now, here is Colonel Tom Bearden talking about this. Also, there's one other thing we must say about that. There is emerging in the last few years, and has emerged in orthodox science at an advanced level, uh, what I would say is the very beginning, but it's, it's moving pretty fast, uh, theory of force-free fields. And these are getting very close to what Tesla was doing. They haven't added the anti-wave back in yet, but they're getting close. At least they're eliminating the overall force and doing something else with the electromagnetics that remains. So, uh, sadly, he departed in early last year. Another person who was dear to my heart was uh, Neil Crichton Gold. And uh, as a result of a diamond observed by uh, uh, Mathieu de Bellat in 2012 into 13 on a Francesco Cellani uh, Constantin treated wire, um, I came up with the concept of using uh, a synthetic diamond, nickel, super abrasives uh, for a reaction matrix to do experiments. He was the first person to attempt this in June 2017, and he was kind enough to send me his reactor, and uh, he was called Lion and referred to Lion until his wife posthumously gave me the permission to release his name. On that, we observed on the copper oxide crust that was formed a two-point galaxy right chirality yang, a three point left chirality yin, a four point and a five point on the inside of the crust. Bostic was not mad. I then saw, thought these were hydrodynamic phenomena. This occurs in all forms of liquids, plasmas, gases, and maybe even in something else. And in 2017 in Sue House Ralka's lab, I filmed with high-speed photography and saw these uh, in an ultrasound container here, these uh, toroids forming, which had wave functions on them, and you can see vortex things coming in. I thought that was probably something important. This is all kinds of toroids. That's a smoke toroid. In this case, this is the same as this, but it's in a dark room, and an alien scientist put a, a spread beam laser so you can see the cross-section of the torus. The one on the bottom here is the uh, torus. Um, and it's one disc here, one disc here, just like Bostic observed, but this is shown by the depressurization of the water caused by the structure, revealing the nanobubbles, and the light is uh, bounced off them. So, um, Ken Scholl has eventually called these things exotic vacuum objects. You can create them by charge separation. I've given a whole bunch there. Adamenko did this 10,000 experiments in a row, produced transmutation every single time using the 1950s Russian uh, uh, process for nuclear synthesis. It's 100% verified, and it's transferred to the US nuclear program. Okay, there's a whole bunch of other things. Ushurenko effect. Use a shaped charge, replace the copper with some sand, and it goes 30 centimeters into steel bores out a channel, multiply replicated, uh, replicated with uh, transmutation on its path. The Russians believe any mechanical impact over five electron volts for hydrogen isotopes will create the right conditions. So what is charge separation? This is in Shak Paranoff's simulation in 2011, and you get uh, uh, vortex and counter vortex with your space charge system. Uh, this is in Helsinki, uh, hundreds of years uh, before Christ was born. Right, so the Shaq Paranoff generator, it is a Mobius strip, and uh, they observed uh, a cone with a, a vortex of a green plasma going into the center in some of their experiments. Sometimes they saw a zero albedo, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, single bar thermal extraction in, that is the yin force, and sometimes they saw destruction of matter and projection out. That is my interpretation. I may be wrong, I often am. So, the Penrose uh, steps on the left 
are a symbol of um, a face singularity. You get a face singularity also with a Mobius strip, and you get a face singularity, this is the face singularity, of a torus. It is the face singularity that does the coherence. Oh, sorry. So, um, what is the fractal toroidal moment? If you have electric current going around a ring, you get a magnetic moment. You put a gl cluster of those around, you get a toroidal moment. You get a cluster of toroidal moments, you get a fractal toroidal moment. They call them, it, it was derived from the 1957 work of the Anapol by Yakov Zeldovich, and later Vladimir, uh, uh, Vladimirich Dubovic at the Nuclear Institute in Dumna, for his thesis in, I think, 1965, but it was published in 67. He um, derived this. They call them in the mainstream peer-reviewed literature, the top levels, super and hyper super in uh, Russia, hyper outside. Uh, but I call them the fractal toroidal moment because it doesn't sufficiently explain them. They are fractal. So the basic one is this. This is in science. This is from 2011. You have an oxygen atom in here, copper uh, atoms, and copper atoms, you get counter-rotating vortex, that's the minimum. I've done a diagram, that's the minimum. That's what you see there. That was in the crust of Lyons copper oxide. The troidal moment is going up, and the matter manipulation with the, tor the torus twist is there. There's a much larger structure also observed on Lyons reactors. So, on the left you have a minimum Yang structure, there's a hole in the center, and you've got this tr moment pushing the material around, that's copper oxide, how does it become like a fluid and get twisted around a cone? Um, on the right you have tungsten, it's a few seconds application of HHO gas in Japan in 2019, on it you have the same structure, this is the active zone, remember this active zone, that is now strontium, this is a carbon film with this wavy line going up there, you will see that over and over and over again if you look. On the left is what I came up with in my dream in January 2018, and hence I launched the idea of Rode. This is in a uh, a $35 ultrasonic experiment, so is that, you've got uh, the, the on symbol there. This is a plasmoid in Hank urine experiment, colliding into fused quartz. As it does, you see the cross section, because depending on whether it's EH, EH, you'll see in a minute, uh, depends on how it impacts the surfaces, and you've got the, the caduceus spiral that's coming out of the center. That's the one we just showed you. It produces exactly the yin-yang, and here is a 90-second experiment, which I'll talk about later, which you can conduct having spent seven minutes learning how to do it. So this is on a Hutchison sample. I have it here. You can look at it yourself. There was four quantization levels I observed with a, a microscope, a fairly cheap microscope. You only need three to get the wheel within a wheel. Within a wheel, you've got a yin yang at that quantization level. This is the same quantization level, but two angles. You've got the core going through the toroid, and then you get that, and you rotate it there, and that's got 48 segments around it. Two days later, I came up with that. This is a wheel within a wheel within a wheel, and from this you just need one moment either the other way or the other way, and you get the zeta b one gang moment. So, have we seen them for real? Hank Uren sent me his quartz uh, uh, anode cover, and this is a video of that, the first video he sent me. And here we have six point, a four, up there four point, a multi point, and that's a simulation we can produce, and it's all publicly available for you. So eventually you may see it's better contrast at the back. It has an event horizon on the bubble, this appears. So basically I promised the community I would try and prove this from just looking at multiple experiments across the field and other fields. And I walked out of the walled garden and looked everywhere. Eventually we found the 3D structures. Now this is very important, what did I say? The inside of this structure, incredibly high and almost infinite, you could just keep charging energy in there, you'll see that in a minute, why? Electromagnetic field, outside, zero, nothing. Outside the mean square radius, nothing, nothing. Diamagnetic carbon, outside, inside, calcium and oxygen. They are, uh, this is why it works, basically. Um, uh, 30, uh, 32 segments on that one. Uh, 48 if that was a full tour, or a carbon around it, carbon around it. And this one, if you could see, it's got three on the sub tour, that's got six on the sub tour. It's fractal on different levels as you go down. This one's probably only got two, and that's why it looks a little bit squishy. 
So having found the first one here on the 22nd of April, on the 30th of April, I sent it to the Russian community. In fact, I sent this image of that one, that one. They already knew how I derived that, and this one. And instantly, without comment, they sent back a paper it published in the peer-reviewed uh, Chemistry of Life journal, Russian journal, uh, uh, and it was by an uh, author called Zverblis. He witnessed this device in 1988 as part of the classified Soviet energetics research in a Moscow basement. And they put a 30 hertz AC single through it, and they put a bit of like a flux, flux gate magnetometer, and they saw an AC magnetic field. Then, this tour of a tour of a tour, which is what he saw, they turned off the power, and it still had this AC waveform. And then they moved it to the other side of the lab, and it still had an AC waveform on the magnetic flux gate magnetometer for two days. He couldn't believe it. He thought they were pulling some scam. But he knew what he saw, so he went to uh, uh, Nevesky, and in 1993, he did a treatment uh, just after the fall of the Soviet Union, and he said, starting from standard, Maxwell equations. If you have a current going around a loop, you get an H field. If you put those around like that, you get an E field. If you put those around like that, you get an H field. It isn't quite like that, but he was on the money. Same thing that David Freiberger derived from Maxwell equations in 2009 at Slack. Same thing. And he said when looking at anomalies in national labs, they saw he claimed that it could cause a change in the dialty angle and decay of baryons. So we have witnessed on this uh, experiment, um, J.R. Roth in Fusion Technology in 1995 said if you could create a 10 millimeter ball lightning, it would produce all the energy for a household's needs. This is 15 millimeters. We can produce them at will. And on the outside of this, which is where the interesting stuff, remember, you've got this circle, but on the outside it's a bit fuzzy. We have two structure, three structure, four structure, five structure, six and eight. Bob, three, three minutes. Oh, great. Bro. I'm going to go quickly. That is a 3D structure. I won't talk about the disruption beams, and I won't talk about the, the, the circle. That's a 4-4. Uh, it explains everything Bostic and Nardi concluded in uh, 1980. Um, it's recently reproduced, there was a paper in 1976, over a thousand Tesla, recently reproduced in this peer-reviewed major journal funded by basically everyone, 1.36 thousand Tesla, and an electric field uh, of 3.6 trillion volts per meter. There's the paper, you can go and look at it. Much larger with reduced diameter. And if I would play John Wheeler, he would explain that, and the relationship to gravity in his 1954 paper. You'll have the presentation, you will see it. Right. The, the, it, this has a, like a tornado tail, and on the outside of the reactor you will see glowing spot moving around. This is on the outside of the reactor. That's the tor tornado tail. Uh, these are the effects on the fractal, by the fractal toroidal ma uh, matter, uh, sorry, moment on matter. Sorry, no time to go into it. It affects all electron interactions. All of them. And here are some applications, efficient material, processing, cutting, grinding, they're all there, I haven't got time to go through them. Tom Beard and I got this video after I took this SEM last week of a 1980 sample of John Hutchison, okay, that Ken Shoulders was brought in to come up with EVOs. I found the same thing, and everything he's talking about there that I haven't got time for you to listen to, uh, he is, he's saying he saw on their analysis in 1990 of the same sample. The challenge is non-thermal but yellow-orange glowing reactor. Warnings about false radiation detection in 1995 to this community by Dr. Takaki Matsumoto, Ken Shoulders in 2004, uh, and uh, Alexander Shishkin. Fake neutrons, fake photons, semiconductor interference, which you can use as a de detection method. This is very important. Forget the EMPs. You can use squids. You can use qubits and rapid single flux quantum devices to detect the toroidal moment. This is uh, Hal put off talking to Eric Weinstein about how you get circumvent uh, the Einstein's theory of relativity to travel faster than light. He then talks using that Penrose phase singularity diagram that I showed you earlier to explain the Aronhoff bomb effect. Okay? And here he's saying, so there are, in, he says, he mentions the Aronhoff bomb effect and how it occurs, and then uh, Hal Putoff says, and you can go way beyond that. So there are all kinds of toroidal geometries, for example, where you have no EM fields whatsoever, but you have blah, 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 right? And he talks about patents, a new company he set up in February last year. And what is that company? Look at the patents. 
This is after you finish the psychic spy program, you have a toroid of a toroid, one vector round, a toroid of a toroid, the other vector round, an electric field. This is a no dissipation, instantaneous communication using the vector and scalar potential. And this, because I feel weird, and I'm on video feeling weird next to a nickel hydrogen reactor. I feel weird in front of uh, ultrasonic experiments, and I feel weird in front of other experiments like plasma that I've seen. This is from June. 2023. And in Australia, they found using functional magnetic resonance Im imaging in the brain that you get vortex and anti-vortex. Whether they like it or not, whether they have an opinion on it or not, it will create a toroidal moment. And that's when they're doing cognitive tasks. I have an explanation for why I felt these feelings. And this guy, probably having done the psychological, the, the, the psychic spy program, he probably had some insight into why he was doing that as a communication. Oh. Nearly there. Would you conclude? Yeah, very. So, you can do transmission of many kilowatts over an 8 micron wire, rediscovered by Matsumoto, but formerly discovered by Soviets. The same cluster goes down the guide wire. You can use a laser to provide the guide wire. This is what the laser fusion is doing. Uh, this is a device we're replicating. It uses exactly the same sacred geometry. Uh, this is a 1979 patent from NASA. Uh, so paper discussing an intergalactic drive and it just so happens that this is what they derived in 1977 This is the magnetic field reconnection. They all go around in a vortex It produces a toroidal vortex and a cone into the center. It's exactly the same thing I'm not a time traveler. I couldn't force them to go back and put this into a 1979 proposal Right, this is wire discharge machining. It complies with the most energetic effect ever observed by uh, Ken Shoulders goes through there. I have six minutes to look at this. Basic material here. I've got my flying spaghetti monster. This is the zinc, this is the carbon, this is the carbon field, all those over to one side. And here are the scallops taken out by the field, uh, the fractal um, mean square radius. Here is tungsten because, listen now, it is a fuel. It was a fuel in Parker Mod's reactor. It's a fuel because it is highly conductive and it's paramagnetic, unlike copper, zinc, and silver. But aluminium is also a fuel. So it fissions in split seconds to all of the elements in your body. But iron and oxygen in this mild steel does not. And they can cut through nearly unlimited because it produces the coherent matter and it bores through. This was turned down by the US, UK, US government and the Australian government. China gave Yul Brown 50,000 employees to do this. I'm nearly there. <laughs> so it affects all metals. The same gas, a Mars gas, on a 75 micron indium foil. Melts at 156.6 degrees. I wanted to take it the other side. The other side, it turns to jelly. It turns to jelly, it's not melting. What's going on with that? That is a finger mark in aluminium by Alec Pizarro. This is what happens when your reactors fail. If you're successful, and Ken Shoulders warned you about this in 2006, this is a simple experiment. It's the same structure. Very important, I go through the, the diagram at the bottom. This is a reactor we have, right? Copper tube, low pressure, all, all cathode. It produces the torus with the tail, feeding the electrons. That tail goes in, that's the orange spot you saw earlier, okay? Copper oxide is pi uh, uh, photoelectric. I could put yttrium on, uh, in, on there to improve it. I want to create a power generation a single coil induction reactor around that. Will anyone help us? That is stable, no one's done that. Thank you and congratulations. Um, this is another paper by Afanasa, the Joint New Institute for Nuclear Research, and uh, Bavik. The Torids produce the AB effect. I rest my case. Okay, okay. Please, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, can I, can I one minute? One minute. Spin matter is the fodder, all spin matter. It doesn't matter whether it's quarks, electrons, but electrons are the start. The outputs are necessarily non-spin bosonic nuclei with four helium and 12 carbon. Carbon always appears on the outside because it's diamagnetic. Oxygen, which is always paramagnetic, doesn't matter whether it's monatomic or diatomic, it goes in the center. Look at this, a spin vortex with triangular holes. Why? Because it's fractal. This is what I used to derive how Bin Juen Huang's reactor was working. And when you know the properties of those element isotopes, you will know that that's okay. why it occurs. Okay, thank you very much.
Are there any questions? Only one short question, please. Yeah. I'll be here for all of lunch if you want okay. to ask questions so or have expansion. Now is the time for lunch, so let's close this session. Thank you very much.